Welcome everyone to a new episode of Encounter with God Together, our weekly and audio video podcast that reviews the readings in our Encounter with God daily Bible reading guide. And um, we are going to be going through um, the book of Jeremiah this week. We The first two days, Monday and Tuesday, are ending, ending in Job, which we've done last week. And so I've asked my friend Jenica here to um, to go through her thoughts on Jeremiah starting in Wednesday. And um, so as you know, each week we have a guest and I'm really happy to welcome our guest, Jenica Stevens, Pesca Payne. And Jenica and I go way back to her, um, her college years in Taylor University. And we've been colleagues in the Bible space. She's worked for a number, number of years for United Bible Societies and is doing freelance writing as well and some even for Scripture Union. So Jenica, it's really wonderful to have you here. Great. Thanks for having me. It's good yeah, to be here. I'd like, I'd like to pray for you before we get started. All right, thanks. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for Jenica. I thank you for her years of thoughtful and engaging consideration of your word. And I thank you for her willingness to be here today and to share uh, with all of us what, um, what has struck her in the book of Jeremiah as we begin. And I pray that you'll speak through her by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Jenica, it's great to see you. You're on the West Coast, so you're a little earlier than I am here. Yeah. But I hope your day's off to a good start. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Good. So um, I'm just going to let you dive into what, you know, God has shown you as you've been looking at these passages that we're all going to be looking at together this week. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was it was great, and thanks for inviting me. Um, I do love the prophets. I think the prophets have a special... Um, spirit to remind us about hard times. And yeah. I think they're often really encouraging to read um, just in periods of, of questioning or periods of waiting. And so when I was starting out reading Jeremiah, you know, I was just reviewing a little bit of, of the background of Jeremiah. And I think one of the things that um, before I started the reading, I was really reflecting on was how Jeremiah started out his ministry in kind of a, a better time in the nation mm, of Judah. Right. You yeah. know, he, King Josiah was, was king of Judah. You know, he was a king who was following God. Um, That's right. He brought it back to the people, right? Exactly. And so Jeremiah kind of saw and had a taste of a little bit of what the nation was like when it followed God. Not perfect, but still, you know better. Yes. <laughs> but, but he kept getting these messages of doom. And basically, you know, God was telling him it's going to get worse. And people are going to, you know, people are going to like follow me even less than they are now. And basically, you won't ever see it get better. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I always feel so much for Jeremiah in this. Yeah. Like, it, you know, here's your message and it's not a good one. <laughs> right. It's not going to be good for you either, really. Yeah. And, and I thought it was really interesting because I think other prophets actually come in at points of crisis. You know, they grow up and they don't see the good times. They're forged in the midst of the hard times. And so for them, all of these messages are kind of forward looking and looking of hope. But, but Jeremiah also had to, you know, he had the uncomfortable position of having to look back and say, I know what it used to be like. And so I think, um, you oh, that's know, a really good point. That was just a, you know, as I was kind of jumping into this I, and I was trying to think how hard this might be for Jeremiah, that was kind of a theme that thought, in some ways that could make it a bit harder because he only had to see the descent. And while even in these, you know, first four chapters, God is promising, you know, if you repent and come back to me, there is still that promise of, of, of taking you back. It's really not going to be within Jeremiah's lifetime. And so the outlook for him is bleak. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and yet, there was faithfulness in the midst of that. And so anyway, so I was coming in with it thinking like, <laughs> poor Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but also kind of an encouragement to us when we're in situations where we might have seen um, 
or been through times, you know, maybe it's in a, a time when we're in a church. I, I know this is something that I've been through in the past where you have been in a moment where a church is really flourishing or really serving the community in the way that um, feels like it's following God. And then there are just hard times. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, you're working towards better times, but you remember those good times and think, why am I not there now? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And Jeremiah has been through that. Um, So, so just as kind of a reminder. And so that was kind of the frame I was looking at it. And um, also thinking about Jeremiah as he's entering into this, how isolated he was, because again, he came in with Josiah who is following God. There's someone who kind of like gets it, (laughs) you know, messages are coming, but someone is going to get it and understand it and listen. And then it all changes, you know, and the people in power are no longer listening or no longer going to listen and they're going to be turning away. Um, And so, yeah, so Jeremiah, you know, has community, he sees following God and then as the course of his life goes on, there's just more, you know, less following God and more isolation from everyone. Mm, Leadership more isn't listening. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And and he doesn't have peers who understand. And so, and God is basically saying, everyone is turning away and you have to be the voice. <laughs> and there really aren't, <laughs> you know, he, he, he doesn't have the community. And but in the midst of that, and that's where we get into the, to this passage you know, yeah. from Jeremiah, the kind of comfort that God gives him in the midst of all of this is, I will be with you. Mm. And I think it's interesting because, you know, he's saying, and we all, you know, we all know this passage before I, I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born, I set you apart, I appointed you as a prophet to the nation, so you know, he's telling Jeremiah, like, I know all of this. I know all of this is going to happen. You have to live through this in a kind of sequential time that might feel really hard. (laughs) But I transcend time, even though you're time bound. And and it's going to be, you know, and it's going to be okay. And what he says is, do not be afraid. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. Because again, everybody's going to start like rejecting his message. <laughs> start out listening, end up rejecting. And it says, for I am with you and will rescue you. So as Jeremiah kind of transcends into iso- more and more isolation in front peers, more and more watching this nation he's a part of, his friends, his family, his whole community is just going in the wrong direction away from God, Mm. God says, you're going to get through it because I'm going to be faithful to you. And you might feel isolated from them, but I'm not going to, you're not going to be isolated from me. Yeah. Um, key there, right? Yeah. And, and kind of what God is telling Jeremiah, the, the, the problem with Judah is that they are not faithful but God is saying, I will be faithful to you. Mm. So that whole, is, I think that was kind of juxtaposed. And yeah. I thought that was kind of beautiful is that you yes. have to watch faithless, you know, uh, becoming unfaithful. <laughs> you have to watch everyone becoming unfaithful. But you, what's going to get you through is, is my faithfulness. And that's a good message for all of us all the way through right yeah yeah and i and i think you know what that is i I think (laughs) to be human and to to go through this life is to feel isolated Mm -hmm. at times and to feel betrayed and abandoned and that communities that once gave you identity um, and you still love are going in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. I, I don't think there's any, you know, human I know who, who was, you know, had, a, you know, more than like eight years old or something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, they passed a certain point who hasn't had to experience that on some level and, um, you know, kind of God has walked Jeremiah through that um, 
hmm. by saying it's going to happen. Yeah. And you're going to have, you're going to have to live through it and you may not even see it resolve, which for me, that's the hardest part because I yeah. see situations resolve, you know? Yeah. Um, but God's basically saying like, you know, they're going to be unfaithful. I mean, you know, <laughs> a lot of this week's reading is, you know, he's talking about is Israel forsaking God, Judah is forsaking God. You know, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, uh, the spring of living water, and have done their dug their own sisters. They're relying on their cell themselves, um, and going yeah. their own way, and. Um, yeah, they're forsaking me, but Jeremiah said, but he's saying to Jeremiah, I will be with you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was looking down because I was yeah, trying yeah. to find this one passage that really struck me um, in chapter two, where um, consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me. Mm. And that just struck me, those, those, those four words there, they have no awe of me, or five words. Yeah. Like, because I think, I think that's it, right? If they can just turn all their affections to a statue or a stone or a, you know, and forget this whole, like, and I think, you know, that's what actually r reminds me that, you know, as you say, that God is faithful to us. Like when I think about that mi mixed with the awesomeness of him, that's when it's, yeah like extra powerful. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's the encountering that brings awe. Yeah. And I think, yeah, Jer you know, Jeremiah obviously experiences that it, in the, um, you know, it, 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 in that famous, you know, passage at the beginning, the one that yeah, everybody uh, knows, you know, he's saying the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth. Right. And he put words in my mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations. And it's like he is touching Jeremiah and the people weren't touching him. They weren't in awe of him. They yeah. Were, they were turning away. Yeah. So I like how in the beginning, you know, Jeremiah does the same sort of Moses thing where he's like, um, <laughs> You know, I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, there are lots of excuses you could like anything <laughs> to keep me from having to like descend into isolation and from yeah. everyone, you know, on this earth that I that I know and trust and love and have to see them walking in the wrong direction. Yeah, with no resolution for the rest of my lifetime. Yeah, um, it's a long time to the end of the book. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, I think it's hard because I think he, Jeremiah he just re reminds us, I mean, he, he brings us into sorrow mm. and shows us the, you know, the, the horror of separation from God and the pain that mm. it illustrates. And, you know, I think in this narrative, we see the kind of physical ripping of the community in a kind of they were taken down since, you know, they were conquered. Um, it's a very overt, um, when the separation happens, the fabric of our lives are torn apart. I think um, in terms of reflection, thinking about times, it may not be that our, you know, community is necessarily conquered in that overt of a way, but it feels like a very torn apart um, we can feel very torn apart and um, and yet, even even in this, even in the you know um, very beginning of Jeremiah, and you know i I um meant to look at this, but I, I can't quite remember like how sequential the book is in terms of the timeline of Jeremiah's ministry. yeah, I think it's. Yeah, you know, I can't that right the second. But mm -hmm. you know, whether or not, still, you know, for us, the readers experiencing it, um, still at the beginning, when these kind of yes. warnings start, um, even in chapter four, um, you know, God is saying, but but it's not over. You know, you don't have to remain in isolation to me from me. 
Um, if you put your, this is the beginning of four, if you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, mm -hmm. and if in a truthful and ju truthful, just and righteous way, you swear as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will invoke blessings by him and in him, they will boast. So he's saying, if you come back to me, you know, I will, yeah. Yeah. In 322, return faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. Um, so there is still hope even at this beginning. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> Jeremiah is sees, not long. right. It's like an arc. Um, he, he experiences some of the good times when the nation is faith, more faithful, you know, he foresees and then moves into a time of faithlessness and yet he still gets the message that it doesn't have to be over yet. Mm. Um, and I think, I think that's a helpful arc to remember because in those times when you're foreseeing separation from God, isolation from community, others remembering that, that there is, there is hope and, um, you know, communion with God again is yeah. a trajectory. Yeah, that is really good. I love the arc, the arc kind of progression mm -hmm. of, of your thought there. And I think that's helpful for us Yeah, to look at this week. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, that, that, that was the big theme for me is just um, taking incur personal, you know, you don't want to put yourself in the place of a prophet. I, I think that's always a a little presumptuous. A little presumptuous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even See Jeremiah. You know, yes. <laughs> you know, and even those kind of that, you know, uh, the beginning of Jeremiah, you know, God's words to Jeremiah is not always the exact same words to me. And mm. yet remembering how God shares his message of faithfulness and knowing that these situations have gone before is nothing new. Yeah. Um, and the character of God is consistent. So when we see his character here of remaining faithful to Jeremiah and offering the whole nation, you know, um, communion again, um, mm. those are really good, um, kind of encouraging promises to remember, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I like, you know, that spring of living water that you mentioned earlier, kind of that, that harbinger of Jesus. Um, yeah. You know, so it's, it's all there. Would you pray for us this, yes. this week? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Lord, as we read about a prophet that you sent with a message to the nation of Judah, we ask you to open our own eyes to your faithfulness in our lives as we remember your faithfulness throughout history. We ask that you would remind us of your presence and that we would also look and remember how you have been faithful to us in the past and continue to show up for us in the future. We ask that you would open our hearts um, to receive and respond to your word this week. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Jenica. That was that was great. A good start to this, this hard book, really hard Bye. yet hopeful yeah <laughs> uh, in the long run book and uh, for those of you who may have um, tuned in or are listening who haven't subscribed to our encounter with god daily bible reading guide you can do that on our website um, through um, email you can get email delivered to your box and i will just say at the outset here that jenica we have had an email delivery glitch this past week so for those of you who do receive it by email, I want to offer my uh, heartfelt apology and let you know that the technical people are trying to figure out why everything seems like it should be working right. And it isn't. So uh, pray for us that we get that back and running this week into your mailbox. You can always read it online on our website each day and you can subscribe to it quarterly uh, to come to your mail. So we hope you'll join us in this uh, wonderful community of engaging God's word each day. Jenica, thanks a lot. I hope we'll have you back again. And I uh, hope you're having a good rest of your day. I know uh, your little one is about to wake up. 
So yes. <laughs> we will we will let you go in, in advance of that. But thanks so much. And everyone yeah. have a wonderful week. Bye for now. Bye.